Feeds and speeds are possibly one of the most important things to master with CNC routers in order to get your process running at its absolute optimum. If you can strike the perfect balance here, then your tools will last a long time, finishes will be great and you'll hit optimum efficiency when running programs. Get this wrong and you'll be burning parts, producing poor finishes, damage your tooling or machine and generally waste a lot of time and money. So this is an important process to master. In time, you'll probably be able to do a lot of this refinement by ear. If you haven't already, then you'll very quickly get used to hearing the sound of screeching carbide. Once you've dialed things in though, you will probably find a handful of common feed and speed cutter and material combinations that work for you. And from then on, it just becomes a rinse and repeat process. So what are feeds and speeds? This is quite simply the relationship between how fast our cutter is rotating versus how fast it's moving through our part. Spindle, RPM and feed rate are the two primary variables with which we control feeds and speeds. It sounds simple, but there are a large number of parameters to consider in this equation, and these should all be accounted for in arriving at the golden ratio that works best for your part, material, bit and machine. If you've ever done any machine or power tool woodworking, and I'm sure most of you probably have, feeds and speeds still apply here. You will already be regulating this without really knowing it. As you push a piece of timber through a machine, you will, or should be, subconsciously feeling the resistance from the blade, listening to the load on the tool and adjusting how quickly you feed the timber through the machine to accommodate, based on how all of this feels and sounds. If you push too fast, you might stop the machine or damage something, and if you go too slow, then you will burn the wood. The exact same thing applies in CNC router work. However, as we know, our machines are dumb. They don't really think for themselves, and they only do as they're told. Aside from maybe some of the very top-end machines, they have no feedback as to what is actually going on at the cutter. If it's smoking and catching fire, the machine doesn't know. Neither does it know if the bit has broken off due to the fact that you've told it to drive through the part at three times the speed that it should be traveling. So as the machine is flying blind, we need to preempt this. We need to calculate or at least get close to the correct feed and speed that will work best for our operation. Most machines will allow tweaking of this as the program is running, but ideally we want to start with being as close as possible. So let's take a look through some of the parameters that we will need to consider in this process. The ultimate figure that we are looking to control is our chip load. Chip load is the amount of material that is removed when a flute of our cutter cuts through our material. This is where the variables kick in. If our cutter is rotating quickly and moving slowly, then the chip load will be small. You may be inclined to play things safe and default to a high RPM, low feed rate combination. However, consider that as chips are removed from the material, they also take heat away with them. Small chips leaving the material at a slow rate will increase heat buildup at the cutting tip, which can dull tools, burn parts, and even create a fire in extreme circumstances. A low RPM and a high feed rate combination will increase the size of the chips and increase the rate at which heat is removed from the material. If this is pushed too far, however, the cutter, machine, material or fixture may become overloaded and fail. So we need to strike a perfect balance between the two. Flute count also plays a big part here. If we use a single flute cutter, then we have one cutting edge that is removing one chip with each revolution. Let's say, for example, that at our set feed and speed, this cutter is removing a chip of 0.1 millimeters per revolution. If we then change that to a four flute cutter and keep our settings the same, we now have four flutes removing one chip per revolution. This would take our chip size down to 0.025 millimeters. In order to maintain a chip size of 0.1 millimeters with a four flute cutter, we would either need to run it at four times the feed rate or reduce our spindle to one quarter of its current RPM in order to account for the additional flutes. So you can see how the flute count of our cutter also plays a large part in this equation. Machine rigidity. Now I have used a lot of different feed and speed calculators over my time. There are some really good ones out there, but my main issue with most of them is that they miss out other key parameters within this equation that should also be considered. The first of those is fixture or machine rigidity. 
It's no good coming up with the perfect feed and speed calculation based on your cutter, only to find out the hard way that your machine has no chance of ever actually achieving those sorts of numbers. Not to mention the fact that your parts might end up flying across the room because your fixture method is also not up to the task. Alongside managing chip load, you also need to consider the load that this operation will place on your machine and fixtures. You may have a full-blown production machine with a vacuum bed, but if you are cutting small parts and only achieving a low vacuum reading, then pushing a bit at a high feed rate and high depth of cut will result in disaster. On the other side of the coin, if you have your parts securely screwed down to your machine bed, but you might be using a lightweight belt-driven machine that won't handle a large load without deviation, then you are also never going to achieve high feed rates. So machine and fixture rigidity is another variable factor that we should put into our pot. Cut depth is again a parameter that I struggle to get a definitive answer to when starting out in the CNC world. As a rule of thumb, you can cut up to two times the cutter's diameter with solid carbide and one times its diameter with HSS or insert type bits. Based on some other factors, however, this can't or shouldn't always be the case. In my opinion, cut depth is the single best way to manage accommodating for a lighter weight machine or a less than ideal fixture system. By reducing the depth of cut per pass, you can reduce the overall load whilst maintaining your desired feed and speed rates. Simply slowing down your feed rate is probably the naturally logical move to manage less load. However, if you aren't reducing your spindle RPM accordingly, then you will be producing smaller size chips and starting to increase heat buildup at the tool again. So we've got a pot full of variables and each of these affects something else within the equation to a degree. So where the hell do we start? Well, to save you the need for doing the maths behind all of this, I've spent some time working on a feed and speed calculator that accounts for all of these variables. It's a tool that I wish I had when I started out in this process and it allows us to tweak any one of these variables at a time and see how it affects the result. So let's take a look at how it works. Okay, so this is my CNC router feed and speed calculator. We've got our input data at the top here and then we've got our output down the bottom in the form of spindle RPM, recommended feed rate and recommended cut depth per pass. So we'll come back up to the top and the first thing we've got here is units. So we've got units in inches and millimeters. We can use both of those here and that should align quite nicely with wherever in the world you might be wanting to use this feed and speed calculator. Now the primary aim of this calculator is to try and fix in as many of these variables in a, in a sequential order as you might be able to do. And the calculator is built roughly in the order that you would typically be able to do that. So units, you're going to know which units you're working in straight away. Material, you're most commonly going to know which material you're cutting. So we're going to start by doing this for softwood and then we'll work down the list. So we've then got cutter type underneath that, which is an HSS insert type or a solid carbide cutter. And that has an effect on our recommended cut depth, which we'll see down at the bottom in just a second. We've then got a slider here for spindle RPM. Now, a lot of time when you're sitting down to calculate your feeds and speeds, you might not know what size cutter you want to use. You probably won't know what spindle RPM you want to use, and you certainly won't know what feed rate you want to use. Those are numbers that you might want to play around with and tweak to find the perfect balance that actually works for what you're going to do. And that's the reason that I've built this with sliders, is it allows you to just slide these numbers around and they will in real time affect your output numbers down the bottom here. So you can see that as we drop our spindle RPM, our recommended feed rate is also reducing. We've then got flute count, which runs from one to four. So I'm gonna start off with a two flute cutter there, which is probably the most common thing that I'll use. And then I'll come to cut a diameter and we'll set that at 6.5. The machine rigidity scale. Now this is something that I can pretty well guarantee you've never seen on a feeds and speeds calculator before. I have set this to run from one to five on a linear scale. Now number one on this scale would indicate something very lightweight. So we're talking very lightweight hold down systems, something like double-sided tape or an adhesive hold down system. 
perhaps a vacuum hold down where you're only getting a very low reading of around about 10% of a true vacuum, or if you're using a very lightweight machine. So this would be things like your belt driven CNC desktop routers or homemade machines, things like that, which you've got to take very easy and very light cuts with in order to not put too much load or stress onto the machine or fixtures. Up at the other end of the scale, at five, we'd be talking about a full-blown production router there. So something that's got a vacuum bed or physical hold downs that you are pretty well guaranteed are not gonna budge. And a machine that's gonna have such good rigid structure to it that it's not gonna flex when it's cutting under load. I would probably just about classify my machine as a five, providing that I had absolute faith in my fixture system. The minute that I'm cutting smaller parts and I'm not too sure that they're gonna stay put, I would wind that down. So my recommendation for the machine and fixture rigidity scale would be to err on the side of caution. If you're not entirely confident in your machine and its rigidity, slide this scale down and that's gonna play things on the safe side. You can always then increase it further on. And in time, if you're using this feed and speed calculator a lot, you'll get used to what your machine is on that scale. So we'll start with that in the center. We'll go with three for now, and we'll just look at our output here and see what we're getting. So you can see that on our output side of things, we get a spindle RPM here, and this is just mirrored from our slider at the top. So we've got quick confirmation of what our spindle RPM is. You can see we've then got a recommended feed rate in millimeters per minute. So this is reading 10,865 millimeters per minute. And then a recommended cut depth of 6.7 millimeters. So let's look at how these tweak a little bit. We're running solid carbide as our cutter. We've got a machine and fixture rigidity of three, around about the middle of the scale. And that's given us a cut depth of approximately one times our cutter's diameter. If we scale that up to a fully rigid machine and fixture, you can see that we can actually push that cut depth to approximately two times our cutter's diameter. And as I mentioned, there are a few little tweaks that I've put in here just to get these output figures to what I actually recommend you run with. So we'll go down to a single flute cutter. We'll go for a 10 mil bit and we're gonna go at 18,000 RPM. So that gives us a recommended feed rate at 5,500 millimeters a minute. Now, I mentioned earlier on in this video that if we wanted to maintain the same chip load and we went from a single flute cutter to a four flute cutter, we would need to feed at four times the rate in order to maintain the same chip load size. So we'll see how that works here. We'll go from a single flute cutter at 5,500 millimeters a minute We'll take that up to a four flute cutter, and you can see we're just a little touch under 22,000 millimeters a minute. So that applies there in comparison to our flutes. And if we dial that down, you can see how that recommended feed rate changes. On the same vein, if we went up to a four flute cutter, but we wanted to keep our feed rate the same, as I also previously mentioned, we could run our spindle at one quarter of the original RPM in order to balance out those additional flutes. So if we take 18,000 down to four and a half thousand, we can see that that then spits out our same feed rate. So we can see how all these numbers and parameters work in relation to each other. So that is a look at my ultimate feed and speed calculator. As I mentioned, this is the tool that I wish I had when I first started out within CNC woodworking. This video forms a sample lesson for my complete online CNC woodworking course. And the feed and speed calculator is available to all students. Once you're enrolled, you'll get lifetime access so you can log in and use this feed and speed calculator whenever you like. There is also a slightly extended version of this lesson available to students within the course. So should you wish to learn a little bit more about things like this, along with a whole host of other things regarding the CNC woodworking process, then take a look at my online course and come on board with the rest of the students that are currently enrolled. The link to the course will be in the description below this video, and I hope to see you in there. So cheers guys, catch you in the next one.